China is undertaking the construction of the largest water diversion project globally, challenging nature itself. Through the creation of extensive artificial canals, aqueducts, and tunnels spanning thousands of kilometers, including routes across mountains, China seeks to supply fresh water to its arid industrial hubs in the northern regions. This video delves into the details of China's contentious south-to-north water diversion project, exploring its cost, motives, and the potential impacts on the Chinese population. Throughout history, China has grappled with the dual aspects of its geography, being both a source of fortune and challenge. The west-to-east flow of the Yangtze and Yellow River systems has rendered much of eastern China habitable for human civilizations for millennia. The fertile floodplains, conductive to agriculture almost year-round, have sustained a continually expanding Chinese population. Notably, China's Yellow River Valley stands out as one of the world's largest and consistently developed arable lands. Conversely, the northern and far western regions present contrasting landscapes characterized by aridity or mountainous terrain. From the desolate expanses of the Taklamakan and Gobi deserts in the north, to the formidable Himalayas and the Tibetan Plateau in the west, these areas are sparsely populated and unsuitable for agriculture. This stark divide is accentuated by an imaginary line, with 94% of China's population residing to the east of this demarcation, a testament to the contrasting nature of the country's two halves. In the annals of history, China's capital, Beijing, and the surrounding northern cities have served as pivotal hubs for population, agriculture, and trade in the country. However, with China's population and prosperity undergoing unprecedented growth in the mid-20th century, essential resources like water became increasingly scarce in the region. Northern cities including Beijing had long relied on groundwater to meet the needs of their expanding populations. Yet, due to escalating urban and industrial demands, this finite source of fresh water faced over-exploitation. The situation was exacerbated by the relentless expansion of the nearby Gobi Desert, accompanied by more frequent dust and sandstorms. Approximately 3,600 kilometers, twice the size of Luxembourg, were succumbing to desertification each year, primarily attributed to human activities such as deforestation, climate change, and the aforementioned depletion of underground water sources. By the early 1950s, it became apparent that northern China would struggle to provide sufficient water for its burgeoning population. Urban centers continued to grow while water resources steadily diminished. Faced with the challenges of sustaining hundreds of millions of people in a historically arid region, China had to devise a solution. To address the imminent water scarcity in northern China, Mao Zedong, the founder of the People's Republic of China, put forth a proposal in 1952 suggesting the transfer of water from the southern regions where it was abundant to the dry northern areas. He articulated the notion that water in the south is abundant, water in the north is scarce, expressing a willingness to borrow a bit if necessary. Fast forward 50 years to 2002 and Mao's vision received approval from the country's state council. Following extensive planning and research, the ambitious initiative was officially named the South-North Water Transfer Project. This mega-project aimed to establish a network of interconnected aqueducts, tunnels, reservoirs, and dams, facilitating the transfer of fresh water from the water-rich South to the water-deprived North. The project comprised three major canal systems known as the Eastern, Central, and Western routes. Initiating near the city of Yangzhou, the eastern route commences by tapping into a significant branch of the Yangtze River. A sizable yet aging pumping station takes on the responsibility of transferring water from the Yangtze into the Jinghan Grand Central, recognized as the world's longest artificial waterway. Subsequently, the water traverses an underground tunnel to cross the Yellow River. Finally, a series of aqueducts channel the water toward the coastal city of Tianjin, situated to the northwest of the capital, Beijing. 
The entire length of the eastern route spans over 1,100 kilometers. Commencing in 2002, construction on the eastern route aimed to deliver fresh water as early as 2013. However, owing to various construction delays, the timeline was extended by more than four years. By 2017, fresh water had finally reached Tianjin with an estimated annual volume of 1 billion cubic meters, directly benefiting up to 10 million residents in the city. In contrast to the eastern route of this colossal undertaking, the central route faced the challenge of lacking existing infrastructure for diverting water. Consequently, the construction on this route presented significantly greater difficulties. The central route commences at the Danjiangkao Reservoir. To facilitate the downstream flow of water toward the north, the Danjiangkao Dam underwent a substantial elevation, reaching up to 15 meters. This adjustment allows the reservoir's water level to rise sufficiently, enabling the water to traverse the canals and aqueducts without the need for pumping stations. However, the modifications of the Danjiangkao Dam necessitated the relocation of over 300,000 residents from their homes to make way for the canals and the expanded reservoir. The remainder of the central route consists of artificial canals and aqueducts, forming a network of elevated and subterranean water passages spanning the Chinese Central Plain. A noteworthy segment of the central route is the Shahu Aqueduct, extending over the Shahu River for a distance exceeding 12 kilometers above ground. Ultimately, the central route culminates at its destination, Beijing, the capital of the nation. Completed in 2014, this central route spans a length of over 1,200 kilometers. Upon its conclusion, approximately one-third of the water flowing through the Han River was redirected. This presented considerable challenges for the millions of individuals reliant on the Han for their freshwater needs. In response to these challenges, in July 2022, the Chinese government announced the construction of an extensive underground tunnel to ensure the necessary water supply. Placed one kilometer beneath the surface, this tunnel would connect the Three Gorges Dam to the Han River and subsequently to the central route leading all the way to Beijing. Once finalized, this tunnel would stand as the longest and deepest artificial waterway ever constructed. By 2030, the central route is anticipated to transfer up to 12 cubic kilometers of water annually, roughly equivalent to a third of the entire capacity of the Three Gorges Reservoir. In contrast to the preceding two routes, China's South-North Water Transfer Project's Western Route is still in the planning phase and proves to be the most formidable in terms of construction challenges. The proposed strategy for the Western Route involves establishing a network of waterways and tunnels connecting the Yangtze River to the Yellow River, traversing the Qinghai Tibet Plateau situated approximately 3 to 5 kilometers above sea level. The region's intricate topography and harsh climate pose substantial difficulties for undertaking this ambitious project. Furthermore, the western route's trajectory necessitates engineers to carve through mountains, adding another layer of complexity to navigate the challenging terrain. The anticipated completion date of the western route is set for the year 2050, with the potential to serve an aggregated population of nearly 100 million people. Although it has never been officially outlined in the project plan, there have been unofficial proposals for the Western Route to divert water from the transboundary rivers originating in China, such as the Brahmaputra and Mekong rivers, which flow through India and South Southeast Asia respectively. Despite not being part of the official plan, concerns have been raised by India about China's potential influence to the Brahmaputra with apprehensions regarding China's capability to manipulate the river's flow, causing unease within the Indian government. Contrarily, for the Chinese government, the South-North Water Transfer Project, although not yet fully completed, is already deemed a significant triumph. According to Chinese state media, the project is benefiting as many as 140 million citizens in water-scarce regions. Nevertheless, Diverse perspectives on the project emerge among local and provincial Chinese authorities. Southern upstream provinces such as Sichuan and Hubei 
express opposition to redirecting the Yangtze's flow northward, contending that the construction of the project's western route would detrimentally impact the region's water security and hydropower sector. Conversely, Western provinces like Gansu and Qinghai are optimistic about the potential socio-economical and agricultural stability that the construction of the Western Route could bring to their regions. Despite the perceived benefits of the South-North Water Transfer Project for certain Chinese northern cities, it has prompted significant apprehension from both local and international environmentalists. The project comprised entirely of artificial waterways, deviates from the natural west-to-east flow of China's rivers. Consequently, the construction of the canal has disrupted numerous natural rivers, leading to the complete drying up of some as their natural courses are artificially diverted. The sheer size and volume of water carried by the project have resulted in the disappearance of 600 rivers during the course of its construction. Furthermore, the inadvertent flow of industrial waste and sewage into these artificial rivers has become a pressing issue. Along the central route, which originates at the Zhanjiangko Reservoir, industrial cities like Xi'an discharge their industrial waste into the Han River. The Han River, in turn, feeds directly into the reservoir and eventually joins the central route leading to Beijing. As many of these artificial rivers traverse hundreds of cities and villages across the country, the practice of disposing of trash into these man-made waterways has become widespread among individuals, businesses, and industries alike. During the initiation of the project's central route, the natural flow of the Yangtze River was curtailed by up to 36 percent. This led experts to express concerns about the potential backflow of seawater from the Yellow Sea onto the local water supplies of coastal Chinese cities. If the Yangtze's flow continued to diminish with more water being diverted into artificial rivers, there was apprehension that salt water from the Yellow Sea might even reach the man-made canals. Such an occurrence could precipitate a national water crisis. Another environmental apprehension contributing to the prolonged planning stage of the Western Route revolves around the construction proposal. The official plan for the Western Route entails creating tunnels through an exceedingly mountainous region of China. This construction effort could potentially trigger landslides, causing environmental damage to the local flora and fauna. Moreover, the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, where the Western Route is planned, is seismically active. Building a crucial megaproject in this region could entail significant financial costs for the Chinese government if a major earthquake were to occur. Presently, two of the three planned routes for the South-North Water Transfer Project have been successfully completed. The overall estimated cost for the entire project stands at approximately 62 billion US dollars excluding the additional billions required for the Chinese government to maintain over 3,000 canals, aqueducts, dams, tunnels, and reservoirs. Despite the considerable financial investment, the original objective of providing clean water to China's northern regions has yet to be fully achieved. Given this context, what are your thoughts on the South-North Water Transfer Project? Do you believe the project's benefits outweigh its environmental costs? Should the construction of the Western Route proceed? Share your opinions in the comments below. And if you like this video, click the next one shown on the screen. I'm sure you'll like it. Thanks for watching.